Hey there friends, Rebecca here, the Dragon Librarian from Farmington Community Library, and Elwing and I are here to talk to you about a couple books today that we're really thinking about this week because of the holiday coming up, right? So it's Thanksgiving this week, um, and usually this is a time of year where we like to think about things that we're thankful for, you know, our friends, family, our health, stuff like that. I always really like to also think about the different books and authors that I'm thankful for because so many of them have made such a positive impact on my life. And that positive impact is what I kind of want to focus on this year when I do my Thanksgiving um, sort of book review video here. Because instead of picking books that I'm personally thankful for because of the writing or the story or however, I want to talk about a couple books that I'm thankful for their way that they change my perspective on things because I think that these books are really important and I think that they're also really awesome and fun um, but I'm just so thankful for a change of perspective or a change of view and it's just really great to read books like that I think especially when you get a, a different perspective on things that you would have never really maybe thought about before. So the first book I want to talk about is We Are Inevitable by Gail Foreman. So the author may sound familiar. Gail Foreman is also the author of the series, If I Stay, If I Go. Um, and there's another one, I think, in there that I can't remember the title for. But she writes a lot of really great young adult books. She also just came out with a middle grade novel, too, um, that I haven't read yet, but I've heard a lot of really good things about it. So We Are Inevitable is uh, the story that is a little bit depressing at first. So it's a story about a young man named Aaron who doesn't really have a lot of hope that things will get better. So his he has this family that runs this book, used bookstore. It's really not doing well. Um, so he's kind of giving up hope on that. His mom and his brother are gone. He's lost complete hope in that. He just doesn't feel like things are going to get better, that they can get better. And he feels that destruction is just the end. So he's obsessed with dinosaurs. He's obsessed about reading about the end of dinosaurs and how their destruction was the end of their existence, basically, right? But then things start to change a little bit. He meets this other young man named um, Chad, who's in a wheelchair, who is literally the most positive person in the world. Like, to the point where he just annoys the ever-loving heck out of Aaron with his positive worldview, right? And then he meets this aspiring musician named Hannah, who is also just so positive and has just fills the world with this bright music. And then all these out of work lumberjacks in the town take it upon themselves to make the used bookstore their mission. It is now their mission to get this bookstore saved. So over the course of the story, Aaron has to do with a lot of different issues, but he realizes that destruction doesn't necessarily mean the end. Sometimes when things come to an end, it means that it's actually time for a new beginning. And I love that thought. I think sometimes it's really easy for us to get upset or worked up about things that don't go the way we want them to. Or, you know, sometimes the world can be a little bit of a dumpster fire, right? Especially now with COVID and all the things that are going on in the world today. Things just look really bleak and they look really hopeless. And sometimes it's really hard to see that light at the end, right? That this book really just completely made me feel so much better about a lot of different things and that you know you just have to hold on to hope and you just have to keep moving forward and that again like I said the end isn't necessarily the end sometimes it just means that something new is beginning and that's great change is scary but it's also inevitable like the title we are inevitable um and it's sometimes just what is needed for renewal or rejuvenation. So I love this book. Like I said, it's it's such a heartfelt story. A lot of great things in there. It's not that long either. So it's a great book to just pick up and read if you're looking for a great change of pace, a great change of perspective. And that is We Are Inevitable. Now this next book is by an author I absolutely love, um, but... It's unlike anything I've ever read before, and I think this is the sort of book that every single person, especially every single young person, should read. And this is called Game Changer by Neil Schusterman. Wrote the Unwind series, wrote, wrote the Scythe series, um, wrote uh, the Everlost series. There's a whole bunch of different stuff he's written. I think this has to be my favorite book that he's written, and one of my favorites of the year, because it's just absolutely amazing. So this book is the story of a young football player named Ash who thinks his life is, is pretty fantastic, right? He's got friends, he's got um, 
you know, school's going well. He's got this football, you know, stuff that he's doing that he really enjoys. And then one day when he gets hit a little too hard, he comes out of it and realizes that the, the things in the world are not the way he thought they were. It starts off small. For example, stoplights are blue instead of red. And everybody else seems to know stoplights have always been blue. Ash, what are you talking about? They've never been red. And there's just all these little tiny changes in the world that he is the only one that seems to be aware of that things were different before. And every time he gets hit subsequently in football, in this story, something else in his world changes. Almost like he's being dropped through different parallel universes. And it starts out small, like I said. Starts out with just a stoplight being a different color, or a stop sign being a different color. But then it starts to get even bigger changes. He comes back one time and finds that segregation never stopped. And that the world is even more racially divided than it is in actuality. Which is still really bad. But it's even worse in, in this alternate reality he's dropped himself into. In another reality he goes through, he's suddenly gay. And he has to deal with all the, the consequences of that. And what life is like through that. Things that he would have never thought of before. In another alternate reality he falls through, he's a girl. In a relationship with a really abusive guy. And it's... A bunch of different points of view that he would have never really thought of or considered before. Oh, another one when he goes through is that he's suddenly super rich. Before his family was kind of in middle class, but then he goes to this other reality and his family is super rich and dealing with the consequences from that. So this book is a single book that deals with racism, classism, homophobia, sexism, uh, domestic violence, so many different issues, but the way that it handles it doesn't feel preachy. It doesn't feel over the top shoving things in your face, I felt. I just thought that this book was such a perfect exercise in empathy, right? Because reading builds empathy. Every time you read a book or a story about somebody in a situation that's different from yours, you're opening yourself up to their perspective on things. And it might make you think, huh, I never thought of that before. That's a really cool perspective on life. Or, oh my gosh, I never realized that this group of people had suffered so much because of this race, you know, or sex or sexuality or whatever. Um, and I think the very great books help us do that. They help us understand points of view that are not our own and make us more empathetic and more sympathetic towards other people, which is basically how you you know, build relationships. It's how you make the world a better place. If you only care about yourself and you only care about the group of people you're in specifically, that's no good. The world will never get better that way. So like I said, I think this book is just mind blowing. I could not believe how cool it was. And I think every young person should read this because it just, it's amazing. It's so, so good. Amazing story. And you know, the writing is going to be good because it's by Neil Schusterman, who, like I said, has written a lot of fantastic stories. So those are the two books that we wanted to talk about this week because of being thankful and Thanksgiving and everything related to that, because of the point of view that they provided and how grateful we are for books that do that and expand our horizons and expand our worldview. It's a beautiful thing. So thank you so much for watching, friends, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and enjoy your Thanksgiving.